video, we're going to give a short overview of bladder changes on Tidland external element shafts. For detailed instructions, reference the user manual for your air shaft series. Tidland recommends replacing external element and bladder at the same time because old bladders deformed by cold flow can make it difficult to insert the external element. Start by removing the end blocks from both ends of the shaft. Then pull the element from the shaft through the slot. Next, lift the bladder from the, from the slot, taking care not to pull out the barb air fitting in the body and remove your air bladder. New spare part kits from Tidland will have bladder with one of three types. Factory sealed ends and air fitting used on 800GH and 800GN shafts. Unsealed ends where the end block provides the seal as used on 800 GX, GL, GE, and GS shafts. And finally, unsealed ends that require folding to seal as used on 800 GC and GM shafts. Factory sealed bladder kits arrive already at the proper length and ready to install. Unsealed bladders require that a hole is punched in order to install the air fitting and must be cut to length during installation. The easiest method for punching and installing an air fitting in the correct location is to use the appropriate Tidland bladder punch guide that corresponds to your shaft type. Reference the Tidland external elements shafts maintenance guide for the correct part numbers of the punch guide. To use the punch guide, start with one end of the bladder before trimming the overall length. Make sure the end is cut square. Insert the punch guide that corresponds to your shaft type. The guide shows the correct air hole spacing from the end of the bladder. If the shaft requires bladder to be folded, then the punch guide will give a hole location leaving enough material for the fold. If the shaft does not require the bladder to be folded, then the punch guide will give a hole location for the bladder that fits under the end block. Directly over the guide hole, use the Tidland punch tool and punch a hole through one wall of the bladder. Finally, insert the air fitting into the bladder. From this point, with any style of bladder kit, you place the bladder into the slot starting at the valve end and press the air fitting into the fitting on the shaft. Then replace the end block on the valve end of the shaft, folding the bladder if needed. It is important to make sure to fully tighten the valve end clamp before moving to the next step. Unsealed bladders have an extra few inches to make it easier to install. One additional step is to mark the bladder on the non-valve end. Check the user manual for details of where to mark the bladder for different shaft types. Hold the bladder in place and install the element. After the rubber element is installed, this mark should be visible at the same point, indicating that your bladder has not bunched up under the element or has not stretched. For unsealed bladders, one trick is to, apply, is to apply air to the shaft that will escape out the unsealed non-valve end. This allows the bladders to relax underneath the element and confirms airflow is unrestricted. Do not do this on factory sealed bladders. 
Finally, cut the bladder to length at the mark and terminate the bladder under the non-valve end block in the same way as on the valve end. For more information, visit us at maxess.com.